the Predator. The troubled, troubled Predator. As always, you can expect an incredibly honest review from me, and this will be no different. Admittedly, I had massive reservations for this film, from the leaked script, the leaked images, the first trailer. But then, things started to look up. We got word of reshoots, rewrites of the third act, and the trailers and the marketing changed completely. And I became genuinely excited for this movie. And I have to say, I loved, absolutely loved, about 90% of it. Absolutely loved it. But 10%, 10% of this movie, namely the ending, ruined it for me. Let's discuss non-spoilers first, and then we'll go into spoilers. The main plot? Well, we open on an absolutely fantastic scene, and something that's not been seen before at all. Something that I can't say, as it'll be a spoiler, but something that expands the lore of the Predators in a great way. Moving from there, our leading man, McKenna, is on location in Mexico on an operation. He's about to take his shot, and boom! Spaceship comes out from the sky. Cue the scenes from the trailers where he stumbles across the gear, and this is the setup for the film. He finds the ship, takes the Predator's gear, the fugitive, and mails it to his PO box to keep it safe as evidence in case he falls into government hands. He does. He's interviewed, or debriefed, I guess you could say. It's essentially just the stuff that we've seen in the trailers. And from here, we're introduced to Traeger, the head of Project Stargazer, played by Travante Rhodes, and my god, what an arsehole. This character is the most badass I've seen in a long, long time. And I don't mean because he's evil or he's just massive, etc. He's just a prick, but he loves it and has so much conviction behind it. He loves what he does, he loves being an arsehole, and I loved watching it. So, from the trailers, we know there is a band of misfits, the Loonies. They were absolutely fantastic, really, really great. They have a superb balance of humour, and although I had my reservations on the dialogue, it actually came across very, very well. There are genuine laugh-out-loud moments, and the characters are likeable. There's one, Baxley, who's played by Thomas Jane, and he has Tourette's, which, of course, could have been played up and come across awful. However, it was used just enough, with just the right timing and just the right phrases and comments that made it hilarious in the best way. The other loonies have their little traits and they're all misfits, but they do become likeable and I engaged with them. The way they're introduced is a little derivative, but it worked. From here, things run astray and predators go up against predators and then predator hunts the team as they have something one of the predators was trying to bring to us for some reason. That's the plot, as spoiler-free as possible. So, let's break down the good. It has an awesome tense feeling throughout. I could feel tension and atmosphere. I got a sense of urgency and it worked very, very well. Despite the great use of tension, it also had some fantastic and textbook Shane Black humour. But it had a good balance and again it worked. The effects of the Predators actually pretty good. Does it work in its entirety? No. And there are some moments that really do suffer and look quite off. The overall story is a good expansion to the universe. This isn't a bland and paint-by-numbers Predator movie. It isn't Men in Jungle, Men Fight Predator, Men Die. There is a lot more to it than that, and some of it works, and some of it really doesn't. Through the reshoots, though, you do get a feel of the film being light. Lots of things implied, lots of things pushed, but nothing really fleshed out. Things that looked like they could have gone somewhere didn't, as if they did potentially before the reshoots. I will commend Fox for trying. They tried to make this THE Predator movie, not just A Predator movie. And part of that is what will be to this film's detriment. It has such a good balance of everything, up until a point. The ending. Then it absolutely screwed itself. It rear-ended itself, and it had tonally shifted, changed, and became John Carpenter's The Thing, a messed up amalgamation of sinew and flesh, a mesh of ideas that just didn't work. This film absolutely benefits from the reshoots, but you can feel them in there and the ending. It's not better than what was in the leaked script, it's certainly no worse, but it's on par and it's equally as bad. But it's such a shame because up until that point, I absolutely loved it. Everything worked. 
And then it's as if someone new just came in and tacked on a new ending and they hadn't even worked on the film but had seen an outline. How can I rate this film? I guess it's probably fair to say that I will watch this again. I want to watch it with a public audience, I want to see their reaction and I want to see it again for me because there is promise there. There are good things in this film but the ending will likely divide people and unfortunately, I hate to say it, I think will be the reason this movie fails. It will leave a sour taste in your mouth and I think a lot of people, the fans included, will not forgive it. The action is great and this is by far the bloodiest Predator movie yet. It earns its R rating and amazingly, Olivia Munn wasn't annoying or incredibly terrible. The kid you saw in the trailers was actually handled reasonably well. Would I have liked less? Sure. But all in all, it wasn't as bad as I expected it to be. So, that out of the way, let's discuss the spoilers, shall we? You've been warned. Spoilers now. Spoiler warning. The opening was so good. The Fugitive Predator is called that because he stole something from the Predators. The opening is in space, we see two Predator ships, one chasing the other, and boom! One of them opens up a tear in space and disappears, kind of like a wormhole. What an awesome addition to the lore, really, really great. The design of the ships, unfortunately, has been kept from AVP though, which I feel is a shame because I really liked what they did with the ship design in Predator 2. So from here, the upgrade is obviously out to get the fugitive. He's an assassin, basically. Interestingly enough though, it's implied that if this didn't happen, the movie wouldn't have happened. So those interviews where Shane Black is discussing the upgrade Predator and states how a clan on Predator World is angry with humanity for beating their champions not once but twice and decided to upgrade themselves and send this upgrade to seek revenge seems to have actually been nonsense. Because as mentioned, it's implied that if the fugitive hadn't stolen anything, that the upgrade wouldn't have turned up on Earth. Once he's here though, does he then seek out some other things and do other things after killing the fugitive? Sure, but those initial rumours seem to be false. Anyway, the whole hybridization element to the movie, yeah, it's still there front and centre. In fact, they have all been doing it. The fugitive has human DNA in it. Unfortunately, this is now canon, pretty much across the board by the looks of it. He looks like a normal Predator too, so that would mean that they all do it, because otherwise they'd look different. Which is a shame, but hey-ho, it's there, it's done. They work it into the story. Why are they doing this? Well, to upgrade themselves, to make themselves evolve, essentially. It's implied, again, there's a lot implied, but not much outright stated or explained, that the Predators are doing this because they want to come to our planet and basically move in. Global warming is creating the perfect environment for them and they want to take advantage of that. Take trophies of the best of us, take our DNA while our time on Earth remains. We're essentially, and described as in the movie, an endangered species, we just don't know it yet. On the topic of the upgrade, really, really good actually, I really enjoyed him. It didn't look as bad as I thought it would and they seem to have found a good balance of showing just enough and not having him too front and centre so as too much focus goes on him and thus the illusion is ruined. It was good, he dies way too easily for my liking though and it all seems just a bit shallow, a bit hollow. The death is very similar to the leaked script and I wish they had changed it. He does a lot of damage to the loonies, kills them all basically, but I would have liked to see him do more so to me that was a letdown. But. This is probably what you came for, the very ending. This is where it becomes awful, atrocious even. The thing the fugitive stole, the thing that is a gift for humanity as a weapon against its own kind, the predators, is a fucking suit of armour. I kid you not, it's a, it arrives in a pod and I thought Arnold Schwarzenegger was going to jump out from some translator, it's called the Predator Killer. So I'm sat there thinking, okay, where are they going with this? What's a predator killer? What's on a pod shaped like it would fit a human body? Arnold? Nope. This piece of technology comes out, hovers above the pod, and then flies onto a scientist's arm. The thing then expands, covers his body like an Iron Man suit, and is a robotic predator suit, complete with metal dreadlocks. His gift to humanity was a suit of armor. A goddamn suit of armor. 
Which then, McKenna states, that's my next suit, I just hope it comes in my size. Setting up a sequel of, essentially, superhero Iron Man Predator against the other Predators. Yeah, I know, you probably think I'm joking, but I'm not. That is actually the ending. Legitimately the ending. Originally, the pods had hybrids in them, Predator hybrids, which sadly, probably would have been better than this. Unfortunately, I think this ending will really put people off, because in a world where superhero movies now dominate the box office, you come to a Predator movie for something new, something different, something outside of that superhero crap, and then, for some reason, Fox thought it would be a good idea to try and turn Predator into some superhero movie. Oh dear. Like I say, this ending will really make or break this film. It's the ending of the movie, so people will come out having their necks broken from the 180 turn tonally that this film takes, and probably be really disgruntled, thus bad word of mouth. If it had a horrible start, but then improved and got better, and then ended well, I think the audience could forgive it, but this... I think will cause issues for the film. Anyway, I genuinely loved it up until that point. I had a great time, but that ending ruined it for me. I hope you enjoyed this movie review of Predator. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the world of pop culture and movie news and movie reviews. If you don't already, please do follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. H Reviews. And as always, I've been Mr. H and I will catch you in the next video.